SpaceX changed plans of using the floating launch pads to launch the Starship into space. Even though the company would have a plan for floating pad, at this time, there is a serious project at hand, like launching the Ship 24 and Booster into space. What plans does SpaceX have for the floating pads this time? Stick around as we find relevant answers in today's video. SpaceX, the world's most successful space company founded by Elon Musk, had canceled its plans of converting the floating rig named Phobos and Deimos after the two moons of Mars into launch pads for the company's reusable rocket. The company had to give a second thought to the floating rig, you know, since so many funds have been vented into the Starship project to make sure it flies through the sky. The idea of a sea launch has been successfully applied in the past, and it makes commercial sense in some cases. Location has an impact on orbital launch trajectory, and a sea-based launch provides the flexibility to choose the launch site that will maximize maximize efficiency and mobility of payload. It's been 15 years since a space company sea launch flew Zenit rockets made in Ukraine using a used Modu. SpaceX decided to follow suit in 2020 and bought the Valorous Ultra Deepwater Rigs ENSCO 8500 and ENSCO 8501. They were moved to the port of Brownsville, where the Starship test site is located, and given the new names Phobos and Demo. The two rigs have been sold to new owners after that idea was tarnished. SpaceX has put its full concentration on developing different variations of the Starship. The two floating rigs shouldn't be a big deal to consider for now. It has to be sacrificed for the purpose of sending the first Starship into space, considering industrial cost management. After SpaceX bought both of the rigs for $7 million in 2020, they moved the first, Phobos, to Pascaguela in 2021, before moving the second, Deimos, in 2022. And while the Starship prototype Ship 24 and Booster 7 are about to take their first launch to orbit, SpaceX has to rule out plans to utilize these two big rigs. As it goes with the popular saying, it's not advisable to bite more than you can chew when you are about to make serious progress in any of your endeavors. So SpaceX will have to fully put its focus on the Starship launch and make it a priority instead of being distracted by some other activities happening on the floating rig. It's quite unfortunate that SpaceX had to cancel the use of both floating launch pads, which were brought into the picture for the purpose of super heavy class spaceports for Mars, the Moon, and hypersonic travel around Earth. According to SpaceX President and COO Gwen Shotwell, the rig has been sold off, though the party involved in the purchase is still kept a secret. We bought them, we sold them. They were not the right platform, Shotwell said at the Federal Aviation Administration Commercial Space Transportation Conference on February 8, 2020. The rig is presently being dismantled and cleared in preparation for shipment to Turkey for recycling and conversion into new steel product. If something goes wrong between Mississippi and Turkey, the crew will fly to the nearest airport and rent a helicopter to go to the rig and rectify any problems as planned by SpaceX. According to a Port of Pascaguela shipping report, Deimos was set to be transferred to the new owner on February 20th to begin retrofitting, while Phobos was scheduled to sail on March 12th for repair. SpaceX has 30 years of experience in the challenging task of relocating rigs, which frequently lack operational power or pumps, and that has been a setback, though SpaceX is not ready to keep funding budgets for the floating pad facilities at the moment. During Shotwell's speech at the FAA convention, she explained that while SpaceX had sold the rigs, she was still confident that sea-based launch platforms would become a crucial asset in the future, and perhaps the company will have to look into the project again. Meanwhile, even though the company will obtain another floating rig, it will be when other projects won't drag down the company's sea operation. SpaceX has got so many other projects to accomplish in 2023. For example, first, the Starlink network is loved by anyone who has used it around the world, so more people will be interested to have the Starlink working in their homes or offices, and that directly means that SpaceX will have to deploy more Starlink satellites into orbit to maintain the broadband speed as the Starlink network goes viral around the world. Hence, that is another task the company has to accomplish this year. Secondly, the Starship's first launch project. This particular project will be a leap for SpaceX to prove that they are capable of what they claim, that is sending a big, giant, tall rocket to space, and not just that it's very crucial that the 
the Starship must not blow up during the first launch. So, the company has to pay keen attention to the launch project in order not to leave any stone unturned. And third, the launch mounts at Starbase Boca Chica are still causing a threat to the company as they will require renovation and critical dressing after every test due to the heavy thrust ejected by the 33 Raptor engine. Hence, the company will have to keep fixing the launch mount after every test or launch to keep flight operations active. These are the biggest projects on SpaceX's plate to consume before the end of 2023. So for SpaceX to run along with the floating rig, which will not give birth to any profit, seems like a shot at the foot. Thus, that project had to be discarded. Remember that the FAA only granted SpaceX to launch only six starships in a year and that will drain Elon's and NASA's goal of landing on the moon. So if after every document has been accessed and the FAA still keeps its stand on only six launches per year, SpaceX's vital launches will be moved to KSC to fire up more starships and make more launches possibly this year. Shotwell claimed that SpaceX lift operations had to be engineered to look more like commercial aviation operation. But in this case, flights will be taken through space using giant rockets and not the Earth's atmosphere as in the case of commercial airlines. Also, the company aims to possibly launch dozens, if not hundreds, of starships per day as soon as spaceflight becomes fully commercial. That means as some starships are landing, others will be taking off, just as you see aircraft taking off and landing at the airport every day. Making the starship cycle target hundreds or possibly thousands of times seems more ambitious than a 1980s rocket record that is still valid today. No rocket family in history has launched more than 61 times in a single calendar year, making Shotwell's Starship Cadence target a record breaker. However, it's uncertain whether the FAA's strict environmental evaluations would ever let SpaceX use launch pads constructed on American territory to achieve anything close to that kind of launch frequency. Also, SpaceX has been permitted to launch up to 24 Starships from a NASA Kennedy Space Center launch pad in Cape Canaveral, Florida, each year. No doubt, Shotwell is the voice of reason at SpaceX. She puts targets together to make a path rather than attempting one gigantic leap making the chance of achieving a goal much more realistic and less of an ambitious dream. So, if she can get a program running alongside managing the Starship project, like to build, assemble, refuel, launch it, and capture flying Starships for the purpose of reusability, SpaceX is certain to get back on track to achieving its target. As said earlier, focusing on getting the rocket system to work and gaining experience is more important than working on the sea platforms now, because working on the sea platforms without a somewhat finalized idea of what the super heavy launch system will actually look like is truly a waste of money and a distraction. But the main nightmare SpaceX has to deal with is government regulation, which include nationality laws regarding when and how to conduct launches that were created decades ago with very different systems and capabilities in mind. Also, splashing down the Starship into international waters is another issue to address as regards aquatic life and ecosystem. Yet, there are currently a lot more crucial areas that require attention and financing. How do you think SpaceX will overcome the threshold of launching only six starships in a year as assigned by the FAA? They have also announced its Starship Orbital Launch new date after taking care of FAA $175,000 fine. Everything is getting settled apparently. Click on the video to know more about this.